In this video demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use the amazing new Frame It dies from the John Next Door collection to make a beautiful detailed frame. And this is the sort of frame on this card that you would think you have to spend absolute hours on to get all this beautiful detail, or that it comes as a one piece die and that's all it will ever do. And that's not how these have been designed at all. So this card's entirely been made just using the JND 436 Delicate Frame die. And as you can see, here's the outer die that has all that beautiful detail, but the panel that actually cuts the frame is separate, which means that you can cut a completely plain and simple frame. So you can cut a beautiful, simple frame. Here's one in yellow. Underneath, we've got one in white. So it means that you can cut beautiful frames to frame your card, but also delicate frames. But when you do, you don't have to start messing about with layering dies or other plain dies to cut the colour for behind, it's all done together in just one die. So I'm going to show you the optimum way to actually cut this before we start to make that card. So here I have a piece of coconut white essential card from Crafts 2. And I'm going to take the delicate frame die and I'm just going to lay down the die here and I'm going to put this right towards this left hand edge. I'm just going to tape it down in one place at the bottom here and use a pair of scissors or a knife, but I would always cut the card down so that you take this piece off the side. You don't want to run extraneous card through your machine, but it's also, these have all been sized so that the John Next Door flower plates will fit on this strip, which means that you're not actually going to waste any card at all. You can even get your leaves in that bit or your sentiment. So from this, we're going to get a frame, a full set of flowers and a sentiment or a centerpiece. So you're going to actually get a lot out of one A4 sheet of card, which is really what I like. So we now need to make the delicate frame up. Now, your instinct may be to actually cut this first and then put the panels on. When you do that, you'll get a frame that's a little bit like this. And if you have a look, you have to be very, very careful because can you see here the frame is off? The lines are off. And I was very careful when doing this. So that's what happens when you cut the frame first. So my advice is always with this, to cut it together. And don't worry, I know a lot of other dyes and dye companies always advise you cut one piece, then the detail into it. These have been really heavily manufactured so that they work really well. So what I'm doing is dropping each piece in. And of course these corners work as the perfect guide. So all we need to do is bring in a piece of our low tack tape and tape it down. I'm then going to move around and do the next piece. And it doesn't matter where they fit in. All four of these dies are identical. So you don't need to think, oh, which one fits where? So if you can see here, I can take this one from the bottom and it will fit perfectly in this side as each one is exactly identical. So again, I'm going to tape that down. And don't worry about the amount of tape you use because obviously the Craft Artist tape that I'm using is completely reusable. Um, and lasts up to 40, 50 times. So there's no concern. So I've taken that extra piece off and I'm going to drop that in. The one recommendation I would make when you're doing this is not to use, I would always recommend the Craft Artist Low Tack Tape for this. It's been designed specifically for working with dies. Um, it isn't pulled from anywhere else. But the one thing I would suggest is this will put a lot of pressure through your machine. So don't use masking tapes or paper-based tapes they will tear your card um, and they will they will transfer a lot of adhesive to the dies and your dies will end up having to be cleaned with an antibacterial cleaner because they won't clean through properly so once you've got that nice and well stuck down we're going to put it on and you will need an a4 machine for this and because it's got a lot of detail i'm using the metal shim to add more pressure into my sandwich and I'm simply going to run that through. So while that's running through, I'm going to show you the sort of completed frame. So you can see here how I've got that beautiful pattern and all the yellow running all the way around it. It, it just makes an absolutely gorgeous frame. And of course, all of these pieces can be put together to make a beautiful background as well, um, or strips through your card. So I'm gonna bring in now my die cut piece and you'll see here, this is cut, but obviously these two pieces here will have cut perfectly. These two pieces, the roller will have come across and missed. 
So you want to pick the whole piece up as one, making sure everything's still stuck in place and rotate it by 90 degrees so that these two pieces at the side then get the pressure. You then pop your plates back on and we run that back through the machine. So to get an effective cut and a beautiful finish, just like this frame here that we're looking at, you will need to run that through your machine at least twice. Um, and I haven't had to run it through more than twice at any point, but I would always like to stress at least because I think that's the better way to do it. So here is my machine. My plates have run through. So we're just going to now turn it over and peel that off. And you'll see I have the perfect frame. Everything is cut, a few bits to prick out. And you will also get a perfectly sized on this particular die, four and three quarter inch square, which has been die cut, which is perfect for using for your smaller cards or for your delicate panels inside. We're actually going to use some of the panels inside. So I would take a little bit of time and just prick all of those pieces out. And obviously, I'm not going to make you watch that. So we'll just take one more out. I just want to show you, show you on each edge, even the centre bits, which are always the hardest bits, are all perfectly cut. There's no problem whatsoever with that. So then what we would do is you need a colour to go behind it. And this is where this frame it system comes in, is it, it has its unique edge. Because all I do is click out each of those white, of those pieces, and that gives me the perfect frame. I can simply then bring in a piece of a contrasting card, tape that die down, and again, don't waste your card, so cut away the excess piece down the side, and you'd simply run that through your machine, and that will give you an absolutely perfect frame that matches. And you can see here, it's exactly the same size. This is so difficult to do with nesting dies as you need to make sure that they are constantly taped together everywhere so you're getting exactly the same piece. You also, with nesting dies, have to make sure that you keep the top because you'll never have an equal border. Whereas with this, every single piece, you don't have to know where it places, but every single time we put it down, it fits exactly in all four orientations. And you never want to see the other colour showing through. And with these dies, you won't. So we glue those together and that gives us then the perfect frame. No yellow showing on any of these four edges, no yellow on these four edges, but that pattern running all the way through. And of course, the other thing that you can do with these dies, which is absolutely, I love this, is perfect. You can cut these into a piece. So you can place them down. So place one down. You can then match the corners exactly. So make the corners meet up. So I'm just going through and making each of those corners meet up. We'll take our last panel and we'll bring that in. So I make that corner match up exactly. I then bring those two corners together. And there you go. An exact perfect frame. And all I would do with that is add a little bit more tape on, just on those corners, just to make sure that those dies don't overlap as you don't want to damage them. And you can run that through and that will give you just a pattern cut into your card. Absolutely perfect. So now we have our frame and I've added some foam tape on the back of here just so that I can start on building the next section or the next piece of the card that we're trying to achieve. And so what I'm going to do now is I've designed these and sized these so that they fit absolutely perfectly with my favourite size of card. So I've cut all of the pieces cut here. And all I've done is cut the card down. This is all Craft Artist Essential cards. So I've used clotted cream, sunshine yellow, and spring yellow. 
and I've cut these to five and three quarter inches, which means you get two squares from a piece of card, which is obviously what we want to do. So I'm going to take a piece of the spring yellow and I'm going to take the next die in the set, which is this beautiful scalloped edge and place it roughly in the middle. It doesn't matter, the frame will hide it if it's incorrect. And we will cut that. I'm then going to take the next piece, which is of our clotted cream, and take the next die in the set, which is the plain square. And again, I'm going to pop that just in the center of this five and three quarter inch piece of card so that we have those perfect panels. We simply run those through our die cutting machine and that will give us here a plain square and a scallop square. And of course, the waste pieces from this are absolutely beautiful. And we actually use those to make the next card. So the next video card will show you how we're going to use the waste. All of the waste from this project is all used to make our next card. So all we do is foam mount this yellow frame perfectly above that light frame. So you can already see how this is working. And when we frame that together, you hide any of the work between it. So here we have Our piece is foam mounted, doesn't matter that these edges are different. So what I'm going to do now is to take the foam tape off the larger frame and I'm going to stick this down. So just revealing it. And for this one, I'm just using my standard two millimeter foam tape that I love to use. So again, spend a little bit of time making sure you're happy that's nice and square and in the center. So next we're going to use this beautiful sort of, it's almost like a folk art or an arts and crafts frame. So what I'm going to do is to going to grab again, another piece of card. And this time I'm going to grab a piece of clotted cream again. And I'm simply going to place this die into the center because this will give me a frame and a piece that comes out. So we will tape that down and we'll run that through and I'm actually going to run this through the machine so you can actually see how this delicate piece actually cuts and cuts perfectly so again top plate on and this is just going through my Kaleido so we'll bring that in so you can see so although this is detailed you would think we would have to run this twice you don't again because of the manufacturing of the die means that all of the detail comes through so you can see there from this we get this beautiful delicate floral frame but we also get another scrap piece with a different beautiful edge so again this will make the perfect mat for our waist piece from our central frame and we can again go on with our lighter color but again I'll show that in the next video so we have our frame here and all I'm going to do is to pop this into here. So again, I'm going to use a little bit of glue glaze. And all I need to do is just pop a little blob on each of these flowers. You don't need to glue it everywhere. You don't need to have spray glue. And the great thing about glue glaze is it dries flat, it dries clear, but it has no depth to it. So it doesn't squidge at all. So we can then just mount that on making sure we're happy that it's nice and square so get it in the right place and i'll just make sure that's pressed down nicely in each point anywhere the glue glaze is a very quick drying glue so if there is anywhere where it's dried very quickly or you've missed you can just pop your wand back in that's why I absolutely love. This is probably my favourite craft product of the century, to be fair. So we've got that beautiful frame. So now we're going to use the white piece from the centre of the frame. 
again to make sure we don't have any waste and all I'm going to do is to take the final die from the set and cut this into the centre. So I'm just going to cut that into the centre panel which will give me this beautiful piece here and I simply take a scrap of the brighter yellow doesn't have to be the same size and we glue that behind which gives us that beautiful panel there and of course there is our stunning centerpiece so all I'm going to do I've already added a little bit of foam tape right by this aperture because obviously this piece is smaller again and we're just going to frame that perfectly nice and simple nice and clean nice and easy card all beautifully layered and then i've got a large eight by eight card blank that i've matted and layered with a little bit more white and a little bit of that bright yellow and i'm simply going to add wet glue because there's different sizes of layers this will let me phrase it on there perfectly We can just pop that into the centre and there we have our beautiful frame which can then have our flowers on, our sentiment whatever on. If I bring the original back, all I've done here is to add a few of the Craft Artist white stick-on pearls. I've noticed there's one missing just around there. So just to show you very simply, it really makes it pop. I'm only going to add one in each corner on this one because it's going to be boring for you to sit and have to watch me stick pearls everywhere but there we go a beautiful delicate frame made using the jnd 436 delicate frame frame it die set